So here is a data set you can find on page 143 of your workbook. What we have here are three different conditions for retail stores selling perfume, low, medium, and high levels of advertising, of promotion. We're trying to tell, well, which one delivers the highest revenue. We could, I'm going to quickly insert a column here, insert column, find the average, average of each of these equals the average of the data above it. And we have these three different averages. But one of the questions we have is, well, is this really lower than that? Or are they statistically all from the same population? In other words, is this variation due to randomness within our samples? Or is this variation due to some underlying true difference within our samples? So trying to figure that out, again, we're going to use that p-value, and we have to find it. So we're going to do an f-test. Go up here to data, data analysis, and here we have a couple of different ANOVAs. This is an ANOVA. This is a single factor. The only thing that's varying is low, medium, and high. So this is a single factor ANOVA. Say OK. Input, that's the data you wish to analyze. That's all of this. I'm going to go ahead and select the labels. So that means here the labels are in the first row, so I'll select that. I'll leave the alpha at 5% because that's what we like to use. And again, control the place where the output is so it doesn't go anywhere. Get this red dotty. I'm going to say the output will start there. And say, OK. My data is grouped by columns, so it all looks good. Say, OK. And Excel produces all of this output. I'm going to zoom in a little, zoom out a little bit so you can see it all. Stretch this column. And now let's take a look at what we have here. So we have our groups, low, medium, and high. Yeah, those are the groups within the data right there. Five is the count. That's the number of data points. One, two, three, four, five in each group. Sum, so they just basically added all this up. Average, well, look here. That's this average. This is that average. And of course, this one is the average of the high. So all it did is repeat the average for us. So I didn't have to even calculate the average. It did it for me. And here's the variance of each group. I could have also calculated variance here. Uh, for instance, type standard deviation. Choose the ones above it. And then try squaring it. And you'll see that you get the same variance. Variance is the standard deviation squared. So this is just summary statistics regarding my beginning data. Go ahead and highlight that. There we have it. What about this second portion? Well, here's my sum of squares, a statistic required by degrees of freedom. Well, I have three groups, one, two, three, but I'm going to have the degrees of freedom of only two between groups because, well, one of them is being used to find the average. Within groups, there's 12. The formula for degrees of freedom within groups is also found in your book on page 142, where we have three groups, so K is 3, N is 15, because 3 times 15 is 15, and 15 minus 3 is 12, so that's my degrees of freedom. The total degrees of freedom is just the addition of the two above. Next, it tells us our means, our mean of squares between groups, mean of squares within groups. Finally, our F statistic, 9.7. We can look up in the table and determine if that's meaningful for uh, 14 degrees of freedom. Or we can do our favorite thing. Just look here at our p-value. I'm going to highlight that. That p-value will take care of most of our questions. There's my p-value, 0.003. Let's go ahead and interpret that here. What is my chosen alpha? Well. It'll equal 5% once again. So is the p-value less than or greater than 5%? 0 0.003 is less than 0 0.05. So I'm going to say the p-value is less than my alpha. Great. So what? Uh, so I'm going to reject 
the null hypothesis. Reject the null hypothesis. Spell that right. And I'm also going to format that. So it sits like this. Reject the null hypothesis. Get rid of that highlighted color. What else can I do with this? Or how else can I interpret it? If I'm rejecting the null hypothesis, I'm going to say the samples are statistic, statistically different. They're not the same. I'm going to go ahead and scoot over just a little bit here. Scoot this in. The st samples are statistically, the differences in the samples are statistically significant, or otherwise the samples are statistically different. There we go. Got that part. Uh, okay. Still, I need to talk to like talk to somebody like I'm talking to uh, my mother. How would my mother interpret this? Well, I have these differences are, are real. So I'm going to instead of highlighting all of this, I'm going to go ahead and clear. No fill. I'm going to clear this. So we'll have again no fill. No fill. And what do I have? Low, medium, and high have these different averages. So, to my boss, or to my mother, I would say the, aver the average, the sales at a store are dependent upon the level of promotion. How did I know that? Well, we, we were told that these different samples are varied by uh, the level of promotion, low, medium, or high promotion. And these averages in terms of total sales is different according to these uh, in independent variables of level of promotion. So the level of, the level of sales at a store are dependent upon the level of promotion. A low promotion yields around 18 thousand in sales, a hot, a medium promotion yields about 20,000 in sales, notice I'm rounding this stuff off, and a high promotion yields about, what does it yield? It yields about uh, 23 thousand in sales. These differences are statistically significant. So now this right here is something I could imagine saying to a boss, expecting them to be able to interpret it. So I highlight that in light green. So there, I'm going to zoom out a little bit more so you can see all the work. Here's an example of a one-way ANOVA. There's only one dependent, independent variable, the level of promotion. Is it low, medium, or high? These are categorical levels. And I'm trying to figure out if this sample's variance is statistically different than this sample. So I use the F test. And the F test gave me my p-value. My p-value is 0 0.03, which is less than 0 0.05. So I'm saying yes, reject the null hypothesis, declare this them statistically different. And we have these claims that we could make to our executives expecting them to understand it. That's an example of one-way ANOVA. Now, let's look at two-way ANOVA. Going over to the Perfume tab, we have another set of data. Now we have low, medium, and high, and we have it in purple or aqua. What kind of advertisements do we wish to use? We can, again, find averages and such, but guess what? the tool will find those for us. So we don't have to do all of that work. We'll let the tool do it for us. I'm going to go again to data, data analysis, ANOVA, two-factor with replication. The with replication is going to allow us to separate the purple from the aqua, and it'll understand how to interpret this. Say OK. Input, I'm going to select all the data, including the names and the uh, column letters. Say OK. Rows per sample is three. See, one, two, three. That's one sample. One, two, three. That's the other sample. Leave the alpha at 0.05. Put the output here. And I'm going to say OK. 
and you have all this output. Let's zoom out so we can see what all we got. So you have quite a few different rows. Here's, let's make this one a little bit wider so we can read it all. Not that wide. Not that wide. That wide will do. So here's low, medium, and high, and the total total across all three groups. Here's my purple advertising. Sums, average, variance. So I guess the average is kind of interesting. I'm going to go ahead and highlight that. I'm going to highlight that in yellow. So it's saying my low has an average of 17,000, my medium is 20, and my high is 23,000. Seems like the uh, prior sample. And here we're looking at aqua, aquas. So instead now we're doing purple, we have aqua advertising. And our averages across the low, medium, and high is here. Low is around 17, medium is around 20, and high is around 21. 21 is clearly not 23. 17.7 .7 is not the same as 17.4. And 20 is not the same as 20.1. So we have a slight differences in terms of purple and aqua. And here's my total for low, medium, and high if purple and aqua makes no difference. You see the three totals there. Well, we have differences. Are they statistically significant or not? Look through all of this, you see all sorts of parts, you know, the sum of squares, degrees of freedom, the mean of squares, the uh, F stat, the F crit, but it's this p-value we need to look at. So let's highlight that, and let's highlight this, because that's what we're going to use to interpret it. So this is my sample, sample, and I got 0.444. What is the sample? Is the sample low, medium, and high, or is the sample purple and aqua? Well, the sample is the purple group or the aqua group. So there's my sample right there, 0.444. Now, if that is that p-value less than my chosen alpha of 5%? No. No, it is not. Therefore, what I know is that I'm going to accept the null hypothesis. I will have to say that between samples, between the choice of purple and aqua, it doesn't really make a difference what color of advertisements I have. So I'll just state it here. The color of advertisement does not make a difference with respect to sales, period. And we got that from looking here. I'm going to highlight that. Perhaps I'll use purple. How does that sound? And purple and I here. Purple. So by looking there at the purple data, the sample and the p-value of the between sample variance, we know that it doesn't really make a difference. The samples, is it purple or aqua? Did not make a difference. Next, we have columns. Now the column is low, medium, and high. And our low, medium, and high has a p-value of 0.0014, which is clearly less than 0 0.05. So this is statistically significant. Aha! What is the columns? Low, medium, or high level of advertisement. So the level of promotion does make a difference. Here, does make a difference. And what is the average of the, level of the low? We don't have to worry about this purple or this aqua, but this does make sense because the total between the samples is important. We'll choose an aqua, highlight that, and I'll say with low promotion, the average sales is dollar sign 17, 600 with with medium promotion the average sales is dollar sign 2100 average sales are 
to at least use proper English since I am recording this. R. And then with high promotion, the average sales are dollar $22,500. Excellent. So now we have that. And that was by looking at the columns. So let's go ahead and highlight that portion as well. That's what we're looking at. So this is the column examination. Whereas this is the between sample examination. We finally are left with the interaction. Now, what is the interaction effect? Well, we can look at the p value and tell that there is no interaction. But what is it if there was one? We know there is none because 0.4 is much greater than 0.05, therefore, this is statistically insignificant. But what is the interaction? What we're looking at is, is there a correlation between being low in purple versus being high in aqua? Or is there an interaction between high in purple and low in aqua? Kind of looking at some relationship between both this between column and between rows or between samples relationship. Is there a relationship between between column and between samples? Is there an interaction effect? And we say there is none, because if we look here at the p-value, we say there is none. So we will write that as there is no, no interaction effect between the color of the promotion and the level of promotion. Let's highlight what we've interpreted, or zoom in on that area. You see how I'm now skipping a lot of the steps, you know, is this statistically significant or not? Do I reject or accept the uh, null hypothesis? How is it related to my alpha? What the point of this course is, it is interpreting data. And you see here three simple statements that are being made based upon analyzing the data. Upon quantitatively analyzing the data, we're converting that hard statistical data into a straightforward discussion about what you found that a, that a manager can, can act upon. So a manager can take this and say, well, if the color doesn't matter, I'll just choose my favorite color, whatever their favorite color may be. The level of promotion does matter, depending upon the cost of that promotion. As long as the cost of high promotion is less than, uh, that looks like a difference of just under $5,000. So as long as the cost of this high promotion is less than $4,000, it seems like high promotion is better than low promotion. So do that. And I don't have to worry about an interaction effect. So literally the, the level of promotion has no effect on the level of on, on the color. And there is no cross effect between color and promotion level. In some cases, there'll be a cross effect. In other cases, there won't. It's even possible to find a cross effect, even though independent effects are not found. With this knowledge, you should be prepared to do, in your workbook, the exercises on the Lakeview neighborhood, where they're looking at different ways of promoting a particular activity, Insurance sales training, where they're looking at different ways of training insurance salespeople. Next is Jackson, where they're looking at cost of collisions uh, between different, uh, between, the, between uh, the red, brown, and purple line, or between head-on, slanted, and rear end. So that's three different uh, lines and three different conditions. So it's clearly a two-way ANOVA with replication. Good luck.